Hello, everyone. Guess who's back? Jen Hatmaker. Yay. Yay. Hey, friend. <laughs> Thanks for having me back. Nice oh, to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. So a couple of things to start off. These eyelashes, oh, they are your magnetic mm, eyelashes. I deeply approve. Deep, and, deep approval. Uh, so, I mean, if nothing else, forget all your amazing work your philanthropy, your books, yep. these eyelashes, you know, yep. that is your legacy. So <laughs> I'm not sorry about that. I don't feel bad about that. Like if that's the thing that ends up on my tombstone, then it does, you know, I mean, no, but it all just aside, okay. I'll post the link to the yeah. eyelashes. So, but yes, um, they're kind of amazing. And yeah. They're I'm game changer for that. Yeah. I'm really, really happy. I could serve you in this way. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hashtag blessed. Here we yeah, are. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm a real thought leader here. You are, you are, but here's the thing about you. I, there are so many people on the interwebs and Instagram. I want to hate and I do hate. <laughs> sure. They um, make it so easy. They make it so easy. And yeah. you are just someone I love more every time. That's I think, nice. and I know you're a human and I know you're not perfect, but I think that you handle life and people and Instagram with such grace and love. And oh, so that's good, a really nice thing to you. say. Thank and you. You take nice a compliment time. about as well as I do, but, um, I know that you're good peeps. And so I'm grateful to you for that. So thank you. let's talk first. We okay. talked about nine months ago and we were yeah. celebrating your book, fierce, yep. free and full of fire at that time. Yep. And it's been a heck of a nine months for yeah, you. For all of us. And me too. Yep. What have you learned? Mm. Well, that was just right at the beginning of COVID too. So COVID was still like a real new thing for all of us at the time. You know, that was just in April. So that was still when we were kind of, well, I don't even know. That was the weird season. We of, were like, this will be fine by June. Yeah. We're going to like right. fill this in with some puzzles and we're going to make some bread. And then this we're is our jammies happily. and feel good. I couldn't have imagined in a mil that would be a year later, almost, right. you know, still kind of in the same scenario. So COVID has really wreaked so much havoc on our lives and our life here too. And the kids and all that. Um, I had two seniors last year. I had a senior in high school and a senior in college. So they both lost their senior years. And wow. um, so COVID has been a terrible year, which kind of at this point goes without saying, it's just like the background noise to everybody else's life as well. Um, and then in the summer, last summer, when everything was already so hard and so disconnected and scary and weird and unknown, um, I s began the process of going through a divorce, which was really surprising and really unexpected. And we've been married for 26 years. It's a long time. My entire adult life um, and five kids. So this has been a year of just unbelievable grief and loss and trauma um, that we're still working through. I mean, sure. I'm in it. The, this is, it's not my rear view mirror, to be honest. So this is still very much um, the, our daily lived experience and, and how much things have changed. Um, we had a lot of change this year. None of it we saw coming. So um, figuring out what that means, you know, how do we, how do we respond? How do we recover? How do we pivot? How do we live in integrity? Even when things are sad and hard, um, because that's life, life is sad and hard for everybody. And so we don't get to, or have to sacrifice our character or our integrity just because of that. And so it's been a lot of hard knocks, a lot yeah. of hard knocks this year. And that's part of what I just think is so admirable and beautiful about you is you kept your, what you needed to keep private, but you yeah. also shared your grief and you shared yeah. your real world and, and you also took breaks when you needed to, and you yeah. cried for help. And I think if everyone could live like you do on Instagram, like it would be a better world, but I know that you grew so much yeah. in this period, like the, your car and yeah. about the importance of a will and taking yep. charge as a woman of, of the Absolutely. things that maybe we don't always take charge of. And so can you talk to that, talk about that a little yeah. bit? Yeah. Oh gosh. I was just thinking about that this morning because I was doing some stuff like that um, this morning, so working on my 
medical directives, you know, just what you do on a Monday. Right. On a Monday. Uh, yeah, what to do if I'm on life support, just a right. Monday morning thought. Um, and I have, I have 10 of those drawers open right now, just between managing my own personal financial life and my own financial future and investments and, and all just literally all of it. Um, and I was thinking this morning, answering emails, dragging things over from the files that I have them uploading them up, 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 how overwhelmed I would have been by any of this, even the idea of it nine months ago. Like that's just, wow. those were not the things I handled. I, in our marriage, it was just sort of a division of labor that we agreed on early and never revisited. So I was just the hands-off partner on all that stuff. I contributed over here in these ways. This was my staff. Those buckets were a big unknown. Like, I don't know who is our, who's our internet provider. I don't know. What's our electric bill? No play. I don't know. Uh, what's right. our mortgage. Um, and so it has been a period of learning for me the hard way and, um, and tons of work. It's been like a part-time job, but now there isn't anything I don't know. There isn't anything I haven't <laughs> right. thought about. There hasn't anything I haven't planned for. There isn't. And you anything. have a new mission. It's like you were telling women, you're totally. like, get on board, learn your stuff. And, Absolutely. Yeah. And, the, and not just because maybe you might, might one day end up divorced when you didn't expect it, but there's a million things. Um, our lives could be rocked by disability or uh, we could lose our partner in, in a tragic way, or maybe we're single in the first place. It doesn't matter. Like this isn't a matter of now you have to know this just in case you ever get a divorce. It's just, um, it's just responsibility. It feels really good to be, um, in front of all that. And so, yeah, I, cause I don't know how else to do. I'm just bringing my little community along with me. I'm like, okay, this week I am eyelashes learning. and wills. Yeah. And yeah. And a will let's just, let's put this in the rotation, put it on your schedule, put it on your calendar. Right. Um, also, do you know, all your online accounts and their passwords. You know, I'm just, um, I'm just sharing it as I go, and um, and it feels real empowering. And so I know if it feels this way to me, it's going to feel that way to the women in my community too. For sure. And I know the it was a couple of months back you posted about I think it was the online passwords or something, and the comments were fascinating. I got I was spent they a were. time long time scrolling on the comments because a lot you know fifty percent. Yep. are in your position. And yep. I'm that I'm the one running the boat. You're here. The doer. If, if something happens mm -hmm. to me, my husband's like, we have money. Where is it? You know? Uh -huh, so like uh -huh. when I go out of town, I leave him a list of these are our bank accounts. These are our totally. logins. This is our spreadsheet. We actually have a spreadsheet in, yes. in a Dropbox now with all the pertinent, if Meredith yes. dies information, but <laughs> it was, it was so fascinating to read like the one, the doers, how yeah. we're kind of ticked off about it. It and, was really and, interesting yeah. to me too, to read that. And that's fair. That is a really fair response because now that I have, uh, that is now entirely on my plate in addition to all the other things that I did in our family and marriage, I'm like, wow, this is an unbelievable amount of just labor and it's boring. You know, it's, it's not like ever on hold. It's on boring. The phone. <laughs> this is what I do all the time. This is me. This has been me for six months. Yes. Hat maker. Yes. No. Oh, that's all I've agent. done. Agent. Agent. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. zero, zero. That's yes. all I do. Yes. <laughs> Five. So it's a lot of work to maintain financial sobriety and, mm. and to have long range planning and, um, to be really fiscally responsible. And so I, I, I honor the doers and, um, my call to women is, if that is your job, it's okay to ask for help from your person. If it's not your job, make it your shared job. Just, it's no fun, but go ahead and get in there and be like, here, what can I take? What can I do? How can I help? Which portion of this can I, can I do as well? Um, because the truth is we really don't know what's in front of us. It's not wise. It is so unwise to be ignorant. So right. unwise. Well, and chances are, if you've got a doer partner, they're only going to show you access. They're not going to actually let you take it because yeah. here's the one thing I gave my oh, husband, yeah. the pest control, like he had one, he had one. Right. And oh, for me it. to get information on the termite bond has been exponentially difficult because he put my name 
but his phone number, <laughs> you know, so I'm oh, on the buddy. phone with the termite company uh-huh. this morning. And, and I told the lady, I said, so my husband handled this one. She goes, oh, sweetheart. Oh, is that what she said? That's she hilarious. goes, oh, sweetheart. I said, oh, well, no. it was his one thing, but now, so, <laughs> yes. but, you know, and I'm not talking trash on, I'm just saying like the doers will be like, I appreciate that. I'll keep doing it, but here's the, you know, they'll make you a spreadsheet. with. That's true. Logins. I actually understand that now, now that I'm in charge <laughs> and I am. I am so hardcore in charge now. I didn't just sort of slide in and begrudgingly manage. This is now my new, this is who I am now, right? Right. I am like, I'm driving this train. I cannot imagine handing over one inch of it at this point, but I might give you a spreadsheet. Like if I die here, access this account, you at least know who, who, who our gas bill is through. Or give them the pest control because really it was a great account to start with and it proved pest all control. of the theories that I thought. Oh, you know, we have spiders, it. but it's fine. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. So with the you know school of hard knocks, you we got to learn things the hard way sometimes um, as humans. Yeah. What do you feel now? Like how how do you feel? Like what is yeah. the air that you breathe? Where do you where do you stand in in your strength? Yeah, it is an interesting. Um ancillary advantage to not only being in a kind of controlled responsible space but it's like oh look what I can do like I can manage all this this is not beyond me and that's I kind of that was sort of my like helpless lady stuff for a long time like I don't know I I don't know how we do our taxes. I don't know. You know, what, where is that? Do we have anything in investments? You know, and I would just, cause I work so hard in my categories. You know, it's not like my categories were empty. My categories were so full. And, but what's, what is true is that none of this is beyond any of us. Like we are very, very capable of living a responsible, organized life with a lot of order, a lot of strategy, a lot of short and long-term like goals. Uh, this is all possible there. And there's people to help. I think another thing that I've really learned in the last six or eight months is that there are people who do this. This is their job. They're good at it. They understand everything there is to understand about everything you don't understand. And they're so willing to help. My list of helpers is this long. I know them all by first name. I've, cause remember this has been my life on the phone right. <laughs> for six months. Um, and there are advisors everywhere. And there, these are not just, this is not just as if you can afford it, your banker works for you. So that's free advice. You right. can set up an appointment and sit in your banker's office for three hours and work through a strategic plan. Um, and so uh, that's been exciting too to go. I'm a, I'm an Enneagram three. So I, I overvalue self-sufficiency. I it's so over-val- weird. I was just thinking yeah. like, how do we t- move the Enneagram into this? So uh-huh. you just brought it up. It was like, yes. Like yeah. there's some weird fake game I play, which is I did this by myself. Um, and uh. that game isn't real and doesn't have a winner. And so learning that that is not a game I am able to play at this level now, the stuff that I'm responsible for, and rather saying, my new game is who can help me? Who can teach me? Who can advise me? Um, that game has a lot of winners. Uh, yes. And so just sort of developing this community of, of, smart people around me to help me really think through goals and how to get there has been incredible. Like I just yeah. wouldn't trade one day of it. Well, I'm an Enneagram eight. So I, I play mm. similar games, yep, you, you do know, similar, like, you know, major games with no winners. Um, so I feel that one. We have some uh, similar energy, the threes and the eights. Yeah. And I, I, I tested high on a three. It was like, yeah. my, I was tied for a seven and an eight and then three yeah. was close behind and I'm married to a three. Oh, that's a lot of alpha energy in the house. <laughs> it's a lot of arrogance, yeah. lots of know-it-alls. We, yes. we, we know I mean, best. <laughs> so much so. Hence the termite bill. Anyway, I'm not going to let that one go. No, it's fine. We're not never. really upset about it. We're not. We're not. Um, I listened to your Monday little, the Mondays with Jen, this, you know, I was oh, in the yeah. shower. Today? You were in the shower with me, Jen. Yes. Oh, it's fine. Today. Today. It's fun. Yeah. Um, I loved it. I thought it was, and I, I want to talk about it. And I, it's, okay. since it's fresh on your mind, I know it's actually easier to dig up this stuff when you were just talking about it, Yeah. but you talked about anger and what you said was anger is a place. And you got this from your therapist because you're yes. in therapy, like, because 
smart people do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but you said anger is a placeholder. It's a conduit to the real thing. And I don't want to yeah. belabor it. Everyone go watch Mondays with Jen, watch her post. But I do want to talk about it because people may pick this up four months from now. Sure. And I think it was so valuable because I'm having the same conversation with many of my clients just saying, you know, anger is the presenting emotion. And a lot of people that's because I'm an eight. So like the first thing I'm going to do is like, you know, get the shovel and bury you. <laughs> oh, sure. Absolutely. <laughs> I, I mean, if you haven't picked anger. that up, termite bill. Mm -hmm. um, but anger is is not the thing. It's the thing yeah. that should should say, okay, what you got going on is real or what you're feeling is real. So can you talk about that a little bit? Because yeah. I just thought what you said today was so powerful. Yeah, I came to my therapist last week and I was like, oh, I'm super mad. I'm just so mad right now. Uh, and, and mad isn't my normal. I'm not, that's not my first reach. So if I'm mad, I'm mad. That is, uh, that is a new, that is unusual. Like I'm so angry. I'm consumed with it. I'm just, I'm incandescent with rage right now. And, um, and then the way that I grew up was always, especially as a girl in evangelical subculture, anger was just not respect. That was frowned upon at best, especially for girls. Um, sure. Boys had clearer path and access to anger, but definitely not girls. And so, um, you know, I really, really deeply, um, I think sort of absorbed that idea that if I am mad, something is wrong with that. Um, I need to fix that. I need to shove that down or get that, get past that. Um, that's not Growing up for me. It was like, you need to get rid of your attitude. It was always, I had an attitude. Oh, yeah. Attitude. Yeah, exactly. There's some, attitude. some trigger words to wrap around it, which are designed to make us feel ashamed yeah. at our anger. Uh, and it works. It does. It works that that approach to me has been a real deterrent to knowing what to do with my anger and probably dealing with it in unhealthy ways when it comes up. So she was just saying, first of all, Matt's not bad. So let's get that on the table. Second of all, um, there is a completely different approach that you have the option to take, which is to say, okay, I see you anger and I welcome you in. I, you, you are trying to tell me right now that you need a place inside of me and you have something to tell me. And so I welcome you. I'm not judging you. This is a non-reactive, non-judgmental um, invitation for you to get to be what you are. And I'm going to pull up a chair and listen to see what you have to say. And so, um, she sort of gave me this physical visual with our hand, which she says, like, if your thumb is anger, um, you know, and you just kind of wrap it and you pull it tight to your heart and kind of welcome it in. And she said, it's a messenger, you know, anger is a messenger. It's a conduit. And so generally what is under anger is one of these four things. And she uses a she puts them on the other fingers and calls it GIFT, an acronym for G, which could be guilt in some ways, something, well, and I, I relate to that. When I have been mm -hmm. felt guilty or convicted over something, it presents a lot of times anger because um, I'm embarrassed. Yeah. Um, so, you know, and I'm that's your three coming out too. It sure is. I'm embarrassed and so I'm defensive. Um, or I, inferiority, and what she means by that is you've been made to feel inferior, less than unimportant, devalued, unloved. That's, I think that's huge for a lot of us. Um, F is fear. You know, we're afraid it looks like anger and T is trauma. We're traumatized mm. and it looks like anger. And if we're willing to let anger teach us what it wants to say, to say, this is what I'm, this is what's under this. Um, then we can really begin this sober minded practice of processing, of uh, working through that, the real thing, the thing under the thing um and and healing and recovering and learning all the things that um those emotions also have to teach us and so i love that because i i don't really feel like i ever learned a super healthy practice for dealing with anger uh, that's not right. something I, I skipped the processing part my instructors basically wanted me to get to the end part when you were over it but not right. the process. When you were back part. to being a good girl, you, you, you did. You when did. that attitude was down. When the attitude yeah. was down. Yeah. Yeah. No. And I would add, like, if I had six fingers, uh -huh. I would add an E, gift with an E. The E can be silent. But for me, it would be like also expectation. Cause mm, I have found good. that, like, yeah. in my life, I get mad when I get mm. disappointed yeah. and is disappointed in myself. Like, if I yeah. set out a meal plan and then I just eat trash all day out of the trash, mm -hmm. you know. I'm disappointed in myself. I get mad. Um, if I have an expectation of others that then they don't meet it, 
yeah. I get mad, you know, so expectation and maybe that could slide under fear because maybe it's, you know, fear that my world's not perfect or whatever, but I, I think noticed- it would also slide under inferior because mm. I, I mentioned today on that video, I don't really like the word inferior. I don't, I don't um, identify with that as obviously an Enneagram three, it's not <laughs> a word we reach for. And I don't, I don't think people are inferior to other people. And so something about the term I don't like, but the explanation of it is that something, uh, however somebody has behaved toward me or in whatever way has made me feel less than, made me feel yes. like I'm not important. So I would even add to expectations. Yeah. When you expected something from somebody and they disappoint you, it does make you feel like, oh, I guess I just wasn't valuable enough for you Bingo. to yeah. be on time, for you to do what you said you were going to do, for you to meet this need that I had. Um, and that feels really bad. It's a bad feeling. It is a bad feeling, but it's interesting when you do this work, when you start to do exactly what you said in your, in your um, video today, it's very freeing Mm -hmm. because then you get a voice to the anger. And if you did grow up where it wasn't approved, it's like, okay, I get to actually put this somewhere now (laughs) instead of in my stomach with the brownies or wherever you see, okay, this is actually justified. So how do I make it productive? And so I just thought everyone go watch it. It's on our Instagram. Yeah. Um, but, but so good. So let's pivot and talk about, I loved when you posted about your audiobook because I did the same with mine. It was two days of like face to the mic and it was the worst. It's so hard. Thing I did, ever. I know when people like actually work hard with their like hands and their bodies and muscles, it feels stupid to say that recording an audiobook for two days is hard work, but I could barely keep my eyes open. I went home and I'm like, on, my, my eyes are on fire. My throat is closed down. I'm so exhausted. I don't think and I- you don't. hate everything you wrote. You're like, this is such a long wordy book. God, who wrote all this? Like, why did you write so many sentences? You know, I was so mad at myself when I first um, set up time in the studio to record it. They were like, cause this is probably the longest book I've ever written. It's like 75,000 words. It is long. And they were like, we, this is a three-day project. I'm like, it is not. It'll be oh a two-day God, project. You watch too. me. You watch me. They're like, I'm just telling you. I'm like, no, I'm just telling you that I will not eat lunch. We will power through the day. And it did. It took us to six o'clock every night. It's so exhausting. <laughs> and you met my sister, Jen. I did the same thing. They were like, this is a three-day book. I'm like, it's a two-day book. Because uh-huh. I had to drive to, I'm in the outside of Boston. I had to drive to, I don't know. Rhode Island. Yes. Rhode Island. Right. I You're not doing that for to, three days. I'm like, I'm not driving to Rhode Island for three days, even though no. Rhode Island, but see, I have no concept of geography because I'm from Georgia. Just oh, like Texas yeah. is so big. You don't yeah. up here in new England. Everything's like, and they're like, it's Rhode so Island's true. like right there. And I'm That's like, true. It's like so just going to another state. state. Yeah. It's another state. Are you crazy? But yeah. same thing. And I remember because, you know, if, and it depends on your producer, who's in your ear, if you've yeah. got a really picky producer, it makes oh, yeah, it true. Just start to get kind of angry. Cause I, I had one that was real picky. She made my life hard. Um, oh, no. Cause I pronounce things the way I pronounce things and yeah. she would stop me. And I'm like, but that's how I say it. I'm from yes. Savannah, you know? Um, so that was fun, but I laughed at you, but what is this book? Yeah. What is, how do you feel about it? I know yeah. like on the eve of, you're not quite on the eve, we got a month, but yeah. like, how, how are you feeling about it? What, what can people expect? Yeah. What are you talking about? I love putting this book out here. This is a um, pretty completely renovated, updated version of a book that I wrote a decade ago called seven. So now we're calling it simple and free. And And it comes with some great ancillary products too, like a journal and it comes with um, a workbook and it comes with all this great stuff. But it's so funny because what I have discovered in this, this is the book that will not let me go. Like, I don't know what to say. I've written 13 or something. And this is the one I'm like, I guess this is my partner in life for the rest of my life. Um, It it was like a social experiment and it, it was birthed out of this idea of just looking around at my life, all the parts of it and just going, everything just feels like too much for me. It's just too much of everything, too much stuff, too much spending, too much waste. I, but I could not get a grip on it. I did not have any concept how to get out in front of that or to wrangle that into something that was ecologically responsible, economically responsible, socially responsible. I didn't have the tools. I didn't have the experience. And so um, I did what I do, which is do something dramatic, like completely melodramatic. And so 
Simple and Free is this project where we took seven areas of excess. So it's, it was food, clothes, possessions, media and technology, spending, waste, and stress. And said, every one of those is in a too much category, excess. And so we spent a month on every single idea and boiled down our options that month to just seven choices. So like I wore the same seven clothes for a month. Um, I ate the same seven foods for a month. I only spent money in seven places for a month. I gave away seven things a day that I owned for a month, et cetera. And just to kind of see what would happen. It was, it was sort of in the spirit of a fast, you know, yeah. not, it's not, it was never meant to be permanent, but like, let's just shake this routine up. Let's figure out what, let's just throw in a little restraint and see what happens. Um, see what bubbles up to the top, see what we learn, see what we find out. And so in addition to all this like real personal restraint in those areas, I spent a lot of that month learning what's actually happening around, what's happening around the clothing and textile industry. What does that look like globally? Right. What's its ecological impact? What's happening around the food industry? Um, what is that carbon footprint? What is, what are we eating? Well, how is it harming? It? So it was a deep dive into the issue. So it wasn't just, I'm sick of the wearing these jeans every day. It was a huge learning year. And, and so now it's interesting because it just has so much more to say, even 10 years later. I mean, media sure. and technology, I read about that 10 years ago. Right. Can you think of how much media and technology has changed in 10 years? Right. That we were blogging had, on Blogger. <laughs> we were blogging on Blogger. There was no Instagram. Twitter right. was a brand new idea. There was no Uber. I mean, it was just, compl- it, so much has changed in 10 years. So I found that I had a lot more to say on that one. I was going to say, that's when you're like, did I really yeah. want to update this book? I forgot Th- that about that That was my chapter. worst update. That was my worst <laughs> update. Um, but then this, the chapter two on waste and kind of conservation, that has become a very centered discussion culturally in the last decade. Um, so I have learned so much more. We collectively as a community are talking about that in new and profound ways. And so there was just a lot more to say. So I went through and updated the whole thing. And then I added to, um, I've noticed some places where something I said was wrong or ignorant or um, insensitive. Um, and some that I just outright didn't stand by anymore. Um, mm-hmm. And so rather than just take all those sections out, I left them in and I gave myself bracketed updates from the, the now me. The wow. me now wrote to the me then and said, I'm going to teach you something that you did not know when you wrote that sentence. Um, and so that's all in there, which is very humbling. I, I was going to say that yeah. that makes me as a yeah. three one, yeah. like let's all stand and applaud because yeah. that, that is incredible, but what a human you are seriously, because you know, it's, it'd be much easier to be like, I never said that goodbye. Carry My on. My editor was like, like, are you sure? <laughs> I'm like, yes, I think this is an important, um, moment that I get to model what it looks like to grow. And that's yeah. normal. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, hopefully all of us know more and do better than we did a decade ago. Right. I I hope the me 10 years from now would tell this me some real new things that I didn't understand. And so I I think there's, we don't get to see a lot of people model that because we just prefer to cancel out ignorance. Um, but we've all, we've all said it, we've all written it, we've all believed it. Um, and so rather than just pretending like I never wrote some of that stuff, I felt like a good moment to set an example for just, just normal, ordinary human growth. There's nothing special about it. Hopefully we're all doing it. Uh, But yeah, it's pretty humbling. That's awesome. That's awesome. I I had, I updated my triathlon book, which I wrote in 2011 and I had a lot to change in there. I mean, and even still like it's called triathlon for the every woman. I, it came out and then I'm like, I didn't cover trans. I didn't cover, you know, and I'm like, oh, we got to have a third edition. My editor's like, well, of course you're going to have a third edition. This book's going nowhere. I'm like, oh, great. (laughs) You know, but to see that the, the way you grow and it it is humbling, but it's also like, thank goodness. Totally. Goodness. I grew. (laughs) Absolutely. I don't think we need to be ashamed of this at all. I, I'm proud. I'm proud of us for listening and learning and introducing new teachers into our lives and new tables that we're pulling up our chairs to, to sit and learn at. Uh, I think that's fantastic. 
And I don't want to shame people out of learning um, because we over attach to whatever they said last time. You know, I think uh, there's, we got to figure out a way to let people make mistakes and then do better. We have to figure that out. That's a real hard needle to thread these days uh, because it's just so easy to pile on and shame people for what, and to be fair, could be harmful uh, ideologies or painful or outright incorrect. So it's not wrong is wrong. But man, I hope that we can also give people enough wiggle room to learn, change and grow. Um, right. And so, yeah, so hopefully we need 20 versions of every book we've ever written by the time we're dead, you know? Right, right. And, you know, it is more difficult to be in the public eye saying anything because then, is. you know, I did a full audit on my Instagram. I don't know. I had a lot of time on my hands at some point last year and I went back and scrolled dirty down from the bottom and thought, oh, archive, archive, archive. What are you saying? You know, I and, can only imagine what I would discover if I did that. And I don't know why I did it. I just was like, I, I don't know, but it, it felt good. But, you know, I probably should have just reposted them and been like, look at this fool in 2011. Sure. Um, you know, now you, maybe I should go back and look, but what did you learn from this, this experiment? I want to go back to the, mm-hmm. the, the seven yeah. experiment, because like when I, so I had a similar idea with my, when I did the year of no nonsense, I said, what does a yeah. year of no nonsense look like? Yeah. And I'm like, this will be fun. What a great experiment. And I uncovered childhood trauma and I uncovered, and then I was in therapy and I was like, why did I want to write this book? Mm-hmm. But did you experience a similar sort of like Oh my gosh, what a terrible and great idea this experiment was. Oh, oh my gosh. I mean, there was a million times in the middle of the experiment. I was like, why the hell did I do this? Like, why didn't somebody tell me this was hard? Like, this was a year. It was the better part of a year. Um, and, And restraint isn't normal. It's not the American way, right? We are a culture of yes and more. And so saying no and less was a complete departure from just the ordinary rhythms of a basic American life. And so did I ever, I learned a ton of stuff. And, but interestingly, what I really learned, what stuck with me then and has stuck with me all this time, obviously an experiment like that, that's so dramatic and over the top, it's not, those aren't permanent changes. You know, you don't wear the same seven pieces of clothes for the rest of your life. Um, But a lot of what I learned was permanent. Um, It, it re, it re, it altered ton of our rhythms, um, how we spend money, how, what I put my hand to what I'm willing to, um, sacrifice and what I'm not. And, um, what I really learned then that has stayed with me so deeply is that surprisingly more stuff, it doesn't equal more happiness, um, which that probably seems obvious on its face. I would have probably even said that, but it didn't Mm -hmm. mean that I was actively practicing less stuff, you know? Um, And so I did notice that there is a law of diminishing returns on how much you spend, how much you accumulate, how much you have in your closet, how much you waste it up, up to a point, it stops being satisfying in any way whatsoever. And at that point is a burden. I, that's what and, I was going to say. And it starts to feel heavy. Yeah. It's a burden. It's like more sweaters. Where do I do with all these sweaters? Yeah. Why, why did I buy another black shirt? Why? <laughs> um, and, and the flip side was true too, that there was a really surprising ROI on, on restraint, on curbing my appetites and not just curbing them, but replacing them with some superior options. A uh, lot more generosity, a lot more giving away, a lot more we instead of me. Um, really incredible results. And so I, it was so monumental that year of my life. And so I'm, I'm thrilled to put it back out there. You know, when I wrote Seven, originally called Seven, now Simple and Free, um, this was literally 10 years ago, it was in 2010. I had a personal Facebook page. Like I didn't have an author page. So I had a personal Facebook page, which, you know, had to be under 5,000 people. Right. So it's like less than 5,000 people. There was no such thing. I wasn't on Twitter. That wasn't, I didn't even know about that. Like 
there was no Instagram. It was such a different time. And so I have a completely different community now. So simple and free to the majority of my community is brand new. It is. Yeah. I mean, I went scroll. I was like, wait, yeah. it says like revised. I'm like, where's the original? Uh-huh. Like yeah. I couldn't find it. Yeah. Yeah, totally. This will be new to my community and it's so much of it is evergreen. Um, yeah. It just is. It's not like in the ensuing time, it's become easier to have less stuff, less media and technology, less spending. Yeah. It's not like that's getting better. It's not like right. climate change is reversing, you know? Right. And so it holds, it really stands up. It was great to go through it again. And I, I look forward to seeing what this is. The, the response originally, I mean, and we're, when we were talking about like a fraction of the readers um, that I have now was so over the top to this book, more than in a million years I could have ever imagined. Like people's, <laughs> like they, they changed their lives around right. this idea. They com- people sold their houses, they moved, they downsized, they did in- extraordinary wild things. Um, they gave money. It was just, I could not believe what happened in the lives of my readers the first time around. So I'm even more excited. You're now. like bracing for a revolution. <laughs> I, turn on Hamilton. Let's go. Now I know. I mean, now I know to expect it. I did not expect it the first time around, but now I'm like, oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. People go, they're going to go crazy around some of this. And stuff. the timing is just beautiful. It's just it, like, now is the time, you know, we've now's come through 2020 and now yep. it's like, what do we do? And so yeah. I'm so happy for you and excited thank to you. read it. And I just, again, thank you for your time. And I so just love it. your spirit. You're my, you're my favorite person to follow on Instagram. Um, nice. besides my daughter, um, <laughs> She's pretty interesting too, but um, thank you, Jen. I really thank appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for hosting me again. And, um, and then I guess I'll just see you next time. There's always something yeah, to talk about. For the yeah. next book, the next revision of the 13. A hundred percent. Yes. There's plenty else. I'm not going to be able to stand by in the next few years. And so, yeah, That's right. we'll That's come right. back and fix it. Okay. Well, thank, thank you. you. Take care. Hi, and welcome to the Same 24 Hours Podcast. I'm Meredith Atwood, author of the book, The Year of No Nonsense. I'm a former attorney turned writer, speaker, and Ironman triathlete. Although right now, all I really like to do is lift weights. We all have the same 24 hours, but it's what we do in those hours that leads to our greatest health, happiness, and success. It's my goal to crack the code on a life of less nonsense so we can all make the most of our 24 hours. So let's get started.